Hello everyone. Today we are going to read about a very famous poem, The Flute Music by Rabindranath Tagore. First of all, we will discuss the key points of the poem. Then we will see the themes and then we will try to understand the poem line by line. The poem is written by Rabindranath Tagore and the protagonist of the poem is a man named Haripada. He is shown as a very poor in confident and unstable man who cannot make proper decisions of his life the poem is also famous for its representation of struggle and unstable conditions of pre-independence within our country now let's look into the themes of the poem the poem revolves around a basic theme that is poverty and instability the poem also shows the oscillation of reality to imagination of the narrator and it and it depicts the woman as ultimate sufferers and it also portrays depression now let's start with the poem kinu the milkman's alley a ground floored room in a two storied valley slap on the road window bed decaying walls windows crumbling to dust in places or strained with damp now in the first stanza the poet is describing the narrator's room the narrator is haripada and haripada's room is being described in the first stanza so the room is in a ground floor of a two storied va valley and the windows are bare the walls of the room are decaying as it has become very old and the windows are also crumbling to dust the floor is full of damp struck on the floor a picture of ganesha bringer of success from the end of a bale of cloth now in all those among all those negative and pessimistic objects in the room there was only a one object that was positive that depicts hope that is the picture of ganesha Another creature apart from me lives in my room for the same rent a lizard so the narrator haripada is saying that apart from him another creature also lives in this room that is what a lizard there's one difference between him and me he doesn't go hungry then the narrator says that there is one difference between the lizard and haripada that is the lizard never goes hungry but he has to go hungry most of the time this shows the poverty he was going through in the next para we can see i get 25 rupees a month as a junior clerk in a trading office now the narrator horipada we can see he is working as a junior clerk in a trading office and for that work he gets paid 25 rupees per month i am fed at the datta's house for coaching their boy apart from working in the trading office horipotter also works as a coach in datta's house for their boy now he is fed at datta's house for his work at dusk i go to the shialda station spend the evening there to save the cost of light now at dusk when the evening falls the narrator horipotter goes where goes to the shialda station the nearby railway station of him he goes there to save the electricity bills to save the cost of light engines shuffling whistles shrieking passengers scurrying police shouting now in these four lines the poet is describing we can see the narrator is describing the scenario of the basic indian railway station before independence now the engines were shuffling whistles shrieking passengers scurrying passengers were running here and there coolies were shouting we can see in a railway station the coolies are always shouting so in that way the situation of the railway station is being portrayed then back to my i stay till half past 10 then back to my dark silent lonely room the narrator stays in the railway station till half past 10 that is 10:30 and after 10:30 he comes back to his dark and lonely room a village on the dhaleshwari river that's where my aunt's people live her brother in law's daughter she was due to marry my unfortunate self everything was fixed now 
in the village nearby the Thaleshwari River. Aunt's people, whose aunt the narrator's aunt's people live, used to live there, and his aunt's brother-in-law's daughter was going to marry him. The everything was fixed, and the marriage was totally prepared. The moment was indeed auspicious for her, no doubt of that. For I ran away. Now the moment of marriage was obviously auspicious for the bride. The girl was waiting for the narrator. The girl was waiting on her own marriage day, but the narrator ran away. The narrator did not go to marry her. Instead, he ran away from the situation because he thought that as because he is a very poor, very poverty-stricken man, he was he cannot take the burden of another woman. He cannot feed another woman. For him, it it is like a burden, but for the girl. it was full of hope full of wishes a new life that she was going to start so the narrator had to leave her instead we can say the narrator could not take a proper decision of life for that reason he had to run away on his marriage day the girl was safe from me and i from her so in these two lines he is saying that the girl was safe from me how the girl was saved now he is thinking that if the marriage would even happen then the marriage would not be a happy relation even the marriage would take place then also it would not be a happy relation so the narrator is being saved from the unhappy situation after marriage and similarly the girl is also saved from the unhappiness of life after marriage she did not come to this room but she is in and out of my mind all the time Now the narrator, as because he ran away, leaving the girl for suffering of whole life, he had a little bit of guilt in his mind, and from that guilt, he used to think, he used to imagine the girl, that she is always in her, in his mind. He, she is always in and out of his mind, wearing a dakka sari and vermilion on her forehead. The narrator used to imagine the girl as wearing a dakka sari, as she was wearing on the wedding day. and vermilion on her forehead pouring rain my tram costs go up but often as not my pay gets cut off for lateness now as because the narrator used to stay alone so there was nobody to wake him up to nobody to call him so as a result he used to become late most often in his work and for that thing he used to get his pay uh, pay cut off his pay used to get cut off for lateness along the alley mango skins and stones jackfruit pulp fish gills dead kittens and god knows what other rubbish pile up and rot now he is again saying about the situation of the alley the untidiness the unhygienic situation of the alley whatever rubbish things it was full of the alley was full of the moment was in my umbrella is like my depleted pay full of holes now the narrator is comparing between his umbrella and his pay he is telling that his pay gets often cut off for lateness similarly his umbrella is also full of holes my shopping of his clothes was like a pious vaishnava his clothes has become so old so shabby that it it has become loose and now it seems like he is a pious vaishnava wearing loose clothes so in this four lines the narrator's poverty is being shown monsoon darkness sticks in my damp room like an animal caught in a death trap he tells that it seems to him that the darkness the monsoon darkness the gloominess has sticked in his room like an animal that is caught in a death trap his darkness doesn't go out of his room it is it has been sticked in the room lifeless and numb day and night i feel strapped bodily onto a half dead world the narrator also feels holy pada also feels he is he is trapped in this half dead world and he is not living he is just surviving at the corner of the alley lives kantabab long hair carefully parted large eyes 
Now, this is introduction of another character named Kanta Babu. So, Kanta Babu used to had long hair that was carefully parted from the middle and large eyes. His tastes tastes were very cultivated, like he had very specific taste. He used to live in the corner of the alley. He fancies himself on the cornet. Now he used to play a instrument named cornet. It is more similar like of a flute. He used to play a cornet. The sound of it comes in gusts on the foul breeze of the alley. The sound of the cornet when it was being played, the music used to flow over throughout the alley. Sometimes in the middle of the night, sometimes in the early morning twilight, sometimes in the afternoon when the sun and shadows glitter. So there was no specific timing for Kanta Babu to practice his cornet. He used to play his cornet any time of the day, during middle of the night, early morning twilight or in the afternoon when the sun used to set down at that time also sometimes he used to play the cornet. Suddenly this evening he starts to play runs in Sindhu Barwa Rag and the whole sky rings with eternal pangs of separation. On that very evening the narrator was speaking that uh, Kanta Babu started playing a Sindhu Barwa Rag. This is Rag means music and Sindhu Barwa Rag is a music of separation. So on that very day Kanta Babu was playing Sindhu Barwa Rag and the whole sky for the narrator especially was ringing with eternal pangs of separation. Pangs means pain, eternal pain of separation. At once the alley is a lie. Now this line is very important in this whole poem. This line depicts the transformation of the narrator from the world of reality to the world of imagination. This is a, you can say this is a transition line. False and vile as the ravings of drunkard. Now after listening, when he listened to the music played by Kanta Babu, the Sindhu Barwarak, while listening this music, he, he goes out very far out of this reality world. He imagines himself in another world which is full of imagination, full optimistic world around him, very different from what is in reality. Like in reality he was totally negative, he had totally pessimistic things around him but in a world of imagination the Horipodo had very optimistic mindset. And I feel that nothing distinguishes Horipodo the clerk from the Emperor Akbar. Now from very pessimistic thinking he suddenly transforms and go up to a very optimistic thinking. He thinks that Emperor Akbar is nothing very different from Horipodo the clerk. Now he contrasts both of these characters. One is the richest man of, uh, of the world once upon a time and another is the very poor Horipodo who is the clerk. Now both of them are not very different when they go up in heaven. Torn umbrella and royal parasol merge rise on the sad music of a flute towards one heaven. Now when a person dies in heaven, when they go up in heaven, there is no such boundaries of richness or poorness. Everyone is same up in heaven. So he says the torn umbrella of Horipoda and the royal parasol of Emperor Akbar, both of these merges when they go up in heaven. The music is true where in the everlasting twilight hour of my wedding. Now he again reminisces the, uh, the uh, he again reminisces his wedding night when he ran away. He is saying that in his world of imagination also, he is thinking that that girl, that very girl whom he left on the day of marriage, is waiting for him again on the doorsteps wearing the similar dakka sari and vermilion on her forehead. This time they are in world of imagination where they can meet but in reality they can never meet. The music is true where in the everlasting twilight hour of my wedding the Dhaleshwari river flows its banks deeply shaded by Tamal trees and she who waits in the courtyard is dressed in dakka sari, vermilion on her forehead. Now again that that para comes again here 
and the similar scenario takes place again and the similar girl is waiting for him again in his world of imagination so with this we end the poem here this is all about the poem for any queries you can ask me in the comment section below i hope this explanation can help you a little bit thank you for watching